Serious crisis at home, serious crisis abroad. Biden's first year at the White House has been an abject failure. And yesterday's train wreck marathon press conference only made everything worse. Just look at the cover of the New York Post. Headline reads, he said, what? Biden's confused, disastrous Q&A. Well, now we know why they've been hiding him away at pretty much every occasion. This press conference was so bad, White House press secretary and propagandist Jen Psaki had to circle back and was forced to issue not one but two very lengthy statements clarifying Biden's remarks. Oh, he really meant to say this, including the president's truly inept comments surrounding Ukraine that shocked the world. That's because in between the lying and the rage and the bizarre whispering, just get vaccinated. You know, and the bouts of confusion, Joe Biden all but invited Vladimir Putin, gave a green light to him for him to attack Ukraine so long it was a, quote, minor incursion. The Russians are testing us. Joe Biden failed that test. Needless to say, the people of Ukraine are now very, very concerned, rightly so. They watched those remarks, I think, I think with horror. Uh, one uh, Ukrainian official who I've been in close contact with while this marathon press conferences underway said that he was you know, I'm quoting here shocked uh, that President Biden would give a green light to Vladimir Putin in this way the big concern of course which is what he was alluding to is that it gives Putin and this is a, another quote from me it said it gives the green light to Putin to enter Ukraine at his pleasure uh, and that's not just one Ukrainian official other Ukrainian officials have responded in a similar way Today's Ukraine president also issued a response tweeting, quote, we want to remind the great powers there are no minor incursions and small nations, just as there are no minor casualties and little grief from the loss of loved ones. No matter what you think about Russia's looming invasion, keep this in mind. President Trump was impeached by Democrats, accused of being a Russian plant that was totally a lie for three years, planted by, oh, Hillary Clinton's dirty misinformation Russian dossier. Uh, then, of course, we had the issue of the routine phone call with the president of Ukraine. Joe Biden has now essentially invited Vladimir Putin to invade Ukraine. Democrats, they could care less. The mob, the media can care less. Joe Biden literally giving Putin a waiver to build a pipeline simultaneously. He's firing thousands of American workers on the Keystone XL pipeline, high-paying career jobs. Zero experience hunter makes millions from Russia from an oligarch, a pro-Putin Ukrainian oligarch, as Vice President Joe leveraged a billion of your tax dollars, had a prosecutor fired in Ukraine for investigating his crack-addicted son being paid millions with no experience. Uh, think about that. Does none of this seem strange to you? Let's ask the question, what if his last name was Trump? And still, Biden's presser was so terrible in many ways that some in the media mob, they couldn't even hide their shock and horror. Take a look. It was a terrible moment in the press conference uh, when, when, when he talked about uh, a minor incursion. There is no minor incursion. At the end of the press conference, if you have to put a statement out to try to clean up what happened in the press conference, uh, that's not never a good thing. I think you have to be honest that you can be a, a foggy, meandering a president, say like Reagan near the end, if you're winning. But if you're foggy and meandering on key questions and you're also not winning, uh, then you've got a real problem. Yeah, let there be no mistake, he's no Ronald Reagan. Now, in fairness to Joe, there was at least one person that apparently loved his performance, the number one chief conspiracy theorist in all America, Rachel Maddow, claiming Biden held a lengthy press conference to show off his tremendous stamina in front of, in front of Vladimir Putin. Oh, OK. Now, of course, that stamina completely evaporated today as he tried to avoid and ignore any and all tough questions surrounding his blunder with Putin and Ukraine. Take a look. Are you waiting on Putin to make the first Thank move, you. sir? Now, that was a question from our very own Fox News correspondent, Jackie Heinrich. And according to Obama's director of global engagement, quote, it isn't a stupid question. It's a really important one. We continue to allow Putin to set the terms, timeline and trajectory of the of this crisis. It's time we stop being so reactive and start creating some of our own conditions. 
Now, if Joe Biden actually wants to see something really stupid, he might want to look in the mirror because, according to his own colleagues, Joe was allegedly considered one of the dumbest U.S. senators in Congress, and now his steep cognitive decline is only making that matter really worse. In fact, today, for the second time, he could not even remember the name of his own infrastructure czar. Uh, take a look at this embarrassing, typical moment. So thank you very much, and I'm going to turn it over to the, uh, the guy who uh, I asked to uh, come out of retirement, not my retirement, but come and take over his gigantic job for me. Mr. President, thank you so much. I'm honored. This guy, that, that guy has a name. It's Mitch Landrew, Joey. And re remember, the last time uh, you called him Mitch McConnell by mistake. At this point, is anyone in this country surprised that Joe's poll numbers are in the gutter, 33 percent Quinnipiac? Just today, a new low in the AP survey, a vast majority disapprove of his job as president. Only 28 percent of the American people want this guy to run for reelection. It's that bad. According to Trafalgar, that's Robert Cahaley, Republicans now have a 13 point advantage on the generic ballot. They started 2021 at a nine point deficit. Now, in an effort to boost his poll numbers, the Biden administration is trotting out someone even more unpopular than Joe. His vice president, Kamala Harris. This morning, she participated in a handful of televised interviews. Not one of them went well. And during a tense interview on NBC, not exactly the hardest hitting news in the world, Harris forcefully had to remind Savannah Guthrie that she is the vice president of the United States and deserves respect. Take a look. Ukrainian officials uh, reportedly heard these words from President Biden with alarm. I know the White House tried to clarify it uh, and clean it up afterwards, but was the damage done? You can't unring the bell. Is Vladimir Putin likely to listen to a later statement from the White House press secretary or the words of President Biden? I will repeat myself. And I'm vice president of the United States, and the president and I work closely together, and I know his position because he has been consistent in that regard. Well, it sounds like Al Franken on Saturday Night Live. Tonight, it's clear we have a president and a vice president. They are not up to this job. And I know this, and you know this, America's enemies, they're also seeing everything we're seeing. And sadly, tonight, as a result, the world and our country is less safe and it is less secure. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.